Matt Conrod is the VRAN Business Development Director for Intel Sales and Marketing, and he is going to look at some of the key learnings from early VRAN and Open RAN adopters. Matt, Intel has been supporting CSP RAN deployments for years. Are there any major takeaways you can share with us based on this experience? Yes, thanks. There are absolutely some learnings from those operators that have introduced Open RAN already uh, that can be leveraged to Im improve your own journey. Uh, firstly, I would say start early. Um, start with your own field trials and pilots um, uh, to get exposed to the to the technology. Um, you won't be able to wake up in 2026 and introduce VRAN like you would a, a traditional RAN feature. Uh, this is a network transformation program and it's important for you to talk to experts and start early and, and learn about the new technology. Uh, I would say secondly is, is to reuse proven open RAN components. Um, we're not yet at a point where you can, you know, it's not quite Lego where you can pick uh, and mix and match all combinations. Um, integration does take some time and uh, for a, an operator introducing VRAN for the first time, the recommendation is is to reuse proven components and use um, partners that have uh, gone through uh, deployment at scale already. Uh, you can always change after that. You can always mix in new components and your own flavor of the open RAN stack after, but um, start with something proven. Uh, we'll save you, save you a lot of time. Um, you know, the third item that I'd like to highlight is we're now in a multi-company development environment. Uh, we don't have one company develop, developing the entire open RAN solution. We have many, and it's super important to uh, find a way to not only communicate between these entities, but to also capture, uh, you know, reference uh, reference configs and um, test setup and uh, test parameters, um, capture and maintain a, uh, a a configuration that you can communicate across these development parties. Um, Again, going back to you know your own your own uh, um, you know your own company learning. Also, assess uh, critically assess your own capabilities for uh, and internal competencies for doing things like system integration and tool development, uh, where where you cannot or don't think you want to do them yourselves. Uh, you, you will need to make some buy or partnership decisions. So you know critically assess what your your own organization can and wants to do with a new technology. Um, some things, as we found out, can only be learned at scale uh, and at cell edge and over temperature of a, of a you know, of a virtual RAN deployment. So, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, start early, but also, you know, work with early pilots uh, in a real life environment. And then lastly, and, and not, not to be uh, minimized, um, you know, Intel is, you know, is here as a, as a uh, proven technology partner uh, for the operator community. Uh, there are a series of best known methods and practices that we have accumulated and we'll be happy to share those um, with you uh, to ensure you get the most out of the underlying x86 technology. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. And if you have any questions on Matt's presentation, then send them in to us. In fact, we've had one question who has asked if, uh, if this live show is going to be made available on demand later yes it is you can catch up and watch it all on demand if you missed any of the start and there's time for some q a at the end of the show christina matt touched on starting early and testing with field trials or commercial pilots um, how have you seen operators benefit from this approach and how can you and your partners help them yeah. First of all, love that video from, from Matt. Really, really enjoyed. And it's coming from everything I, that he said, completely, absolutely correct and, and right on point. It's coming, all of that is coming from the experience and the years that we have working on this, uh, on this area, starting even at the virtualization of the core. And now all the years already that we have spent in the, in, in, in the rent. We, we're very proud to say that today, nearly every VRAN deployment is really in the world, is really happening, is running on Intel Xeon. And obviously we're super proud of that, but also that give us a lot of experience and, uh, and, and best known uh, methods, I would say. So totally agree, start early, 
and, and, and get, get it to work, right? Because here's the thing, the technology, and I have mentioned this before, the technology is ready today. Uh, we are going to continue investing in our roadmap. So it's going to be our our partners here with me. We're going to continue making better and better. So so always there will always be something better coming up. But it is important to realize that we have today what we need to start. So fundamentally, key to successful uh, to a success journey is to start with those trials, those pl pilots. And, uh, and moving on on the scale because, as Matt said, is uh, many times you learn things at a scale that you don't you have no way to learn before before that before before that. I'm gonna say last year we launched what we call the fourth generation of Intel Xeon scalable processors with Intel VRAM Boost. Right? And we built this uh, this uh, CPU with a design with with a purpose in mind to design for powering high performance power efficiency and ai optimized vram so we had the fully integrated vram acceleration acceleration directly into the cpu no need to have any external components reducing complexity simplifying the design paul was talking about the importance of simplifying the design having all the everything that is needed on C and the CPU, including AI capabilities, right? Because if you if we're gonna start applying AI and it's already starting to happen, you wanna do it all within the CPU. You don't you don't wanna have an external, uh, again power hungry component uh, uh, consuming your resources. You wanna be able to run the entire workload in the in the CPU. So that technology exist and we have demonstrated how we were able to double the capacity but also uh, reduce the total uh, power consumption compared to a uh, previous uh, previous generation i think the other thing to to keep in mind in the in the in, in the recommendation to start early and using the technology today one of the benefits of having a software defined network running on a server architecture is the the, the porting of the software we have data from uh, from uh, partners today that have been able to compile recompile the the previous uh, the software running on the previous generation hit compile and having in a matter of hours the entire software load running on the new generation. That doesn't happen unless you have this type of architecture. That just doesn't happen unless you are running a software-defined network on a, a server architecture based on Intel Xeon uh, processor. So this is very powerful because everything that you are doing today, you will be able to reuse it and have right off the bat with a new generation, a baseline that works and give you every, all the all the uh, requirements that that you need, and then you need to optimize and and use the capabilities, of course, of the new generation that's always there. Uh, but you have a really really good uh, good start. So again, um, I think by now we have proven that VRAN solutions can compete on po power and performance KPIs with purpose built solutions. Um, there's no trade-off here. We have what the, the industry need for today and for the future. And, uh, you know, Brownfield, Greenfield, all across the, the world, just let's start. Let's start early. Let's start with what we have today is ready and, uh, and let's scale. Thank you very much, Christina. Well, we've got a lot to still get through on this show, so we, we just need to um, move on a bit. We've got a couple more presentations to go, but I do want to talk to Paul and Manish. Manish, we heard from Matt there about internal competence. So how does OpenRAN change the way that operators deploy and support networks and what skill sets are important for success? And also, you know, how should they decide what to invest internally and what to outsource elsewhere? Yeah, I think that's a great question, uh, 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 Guy. I mean, uh, to, 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 to really think about it, and I'll again just take a practical example of uh, working very closely with DISH as they were rolling out uh, uh, their open RAN networks. They were, first and foremost, it's, uh, to, to Matt's point, selecting the right partners and the right components of the solution. 
Uh, that's super important because you want to bring in the set of partners who are committed to actually making this happen, who have experience, who have already done this, who also have the right technology capabilities, but most importantly, who are uh, who are really aligned, you know, strategically to make open run happen. So that's very important. Then the question comes in is what parts of this you do internally in house as an operator versus what, what, what capabilities you expect from those partners. I can again just tell you in our certain, in our experience, things like bringing the infrastructure block as pre-integrated capabilities uh, to the service providers, that has obviously helped them in, again, not having to undertake all that integration work between the server platforms and the CAS layer and the automation layer, all that pre-packaged, pre, so, starts to accelerate their deployment timelines. Uh, also bringing in OTEL, our open telecom ecosystem lab, which is again, number of operators who are right now in OTEL working with us and the partner ecosystem to do continuous integration, continuous validation. And, and then I'll again say, I mean, take a look at examples of Vodafone, of Dish Networks, where in certain cases, they have gone ahead and built capabilities and transformed how they procure, how, because you're you're now no longer procuring an appliance, you're procuring from an open ecosystem. So you need to transform how you convene and procure from an open ecosystem, uh, building their own capabilities in terms of testing, validation, doing certain levels of integration. And then of course they have to build the capabilities to do uh, these integration on a continuous basis. Because as I keep saying, this is about transforming the network to make it more cloud-like, achieving the economies of cloud, innovating at the speed of the software. That's the bottom line, right? This is this is what the, 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 the North Star is. So building those capabilities are important. I'm going to probably stop here in the interest of time. Thanks very much, Manish, because we have got a lot of viewer questions. Oh, they're all coming in now. Uh, they're all coming in at once. We've got, uh, we've got, we've got dozens. Um, Paul, um, we've got a full length interview that we conducted with Matt, where he speaks to some performance gains with Intel processors. And I understand that Wind River has made some optimizations here. Can you tell us what these are and how they factor into this tipping point moment for Open Run? Yes, and this also ties into the uh, real need that our customers have to drive total cost of ownership down. The work that we've done with Intel really shows how these technology innovations can directly contribute to business results. In the case of working with Intel and implementing a CAS architecture, We've done some things that reduce the footprint requirement to a very small um, uh, physical presence at the edge of the network. And then also within the processor architecture, taking our overhead software, because really the infrastructure and cloud infra infrastructure is overhead, right? You've got an infrastructure that hosts the application. You need to free as much compute possible for that application to run. Uh, and in the work we've done with Intel on the Sapphire Rapids program, uh, we're pleased to announce that we actually run all the way down into a single processor core now for all of the overhead functionality. And this enables uh, incredible TCO benefits for uh, customers that are deploying this type of technology. Uh, and the second is that uh, we've, we uh, did some work with Analysis Mason um, where we surveyed CSPs that are actually deploying open RAN technology. And they found that the greatest obstacle that they had was integration costs and complexity. And our ability to solve that problem with innovations like the Dell Telecom infrastructure block enable us to remove those costs and significantly improve the uh, ease of adoption of these technologies as we've talked about throughout the session here today. And that's another key uh, obstacle remover for the adoption of these technologies.